Hello everyone, this is Beastly Eel here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Episode 2 of Secret Invasion. So, I will say this, if you have not seen this episode, I do recommend you pausing the video and waiting to watch it after you've seen the episode. If you don't care about spoilers, or you have actually seen the episode already, then welcome aboard. The big thing was, there is a lot that happened in this, and it is very quick. So, as I think I stated in my last um, reaction video, this is a spy show, so a lot happens. Meaning, not everything we see is going to make sense. I'm imagining that as time goes on, everything will make sense as it all comes together. But it won't make sense until we get through the whole series. So because of that, there are going to be some weird things that I say, and I do apologize, but it is exactly what happens. So I'm going to break this up into two parts, um, Nick Fury, and then we're going to be talking about the scrolls in general. There's a reason why I'm breaking up that way, and you're going to find out. Um, it makes sense if you watched it, obviously, but um, if you have not, um, it'll make sense overall. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about Nick Fury. So Nick Fury um, escapes Moscow, being captured, captured um, by the scroll from I believe his name is Thal Thalos, Talos. Sorry, Talos, um, who was a part of who was the main scroll in Captain Marvel. I had to think about that for a second. And what I didn't realize was when he was when he was in Captain Marvel, he was actually a general, and we'll get to talking about that a little bit later. But anyway, he gets Fury out of the area, and then the government takes care of capturing another person. So Nick Fury gets captured, um, and then he and Talos are on a train in Moscow to get out of there. And the entire time, um, Talos and him are in an argument, Mostly due to the fact that um, Talos has been keeping information from Nick Fury. Specifically the fact that there are millions of scrolls on planet Earth now. That they all were trying to get refuge on Earth. And Nick Fury did not know that. Now he knew that there were a bunch of scrolls on Earth. Although he did not know that there was an entire, almost the entire race of people on Earth now. And Nick Fury gets so pissed off, he tells Talos to leave, and that he was not, did not want to talk to him anymore. So we then see Nick Fury leave and go to um, Maria Hill's funeral. And apparently her mother is not happy her daughter's dead, which, all things considered, that shouldn't be all that shocking. He seems to be the only one that tells Maria Hill's mother exactly what has happened to a certain degree. He does not give all the information away, but he definitely gives a lot more than everyone else there. She is not happy, and she basically tells him, Nick, that, you know, whatever my daughter died for better not have been for nothing, and you better make sure it doesn't happen for nothing. And so Nick Fury obviously takes that to heart. Um, he then leaves, and then we see War Machine <laughs> basically being interrogated by several nations. Um, and what is basically happening is they're claiming that Nick Fury and Maria Hill were acting as U.S. agents causing devastation in Moscow. And basically, Colonel Rhodes is like, whoa, I don't know what you're telling me. Like, I know what you're telling me right now, but nothing you have stated to me has proven that, one, they were 100% there nor were they involved in the actual issue at hand. So, there is a lot of back and forth between them and how they're, they don't believe the fact that Colonel Rhodes does not know what's going on. Or the fact that they don't think the United States of America were not involved in some way in these terrorist attacks. Although Colonel, Colonel, um, Colonel Rhodes has definitely made it clear that he's trying to explain to everyone that that's not the case, but to no end. So when he's leaving, he actually gets a phone call from Nick Fury, basically insulting his suit and everything else. Um, and that is when the two of them speak to each other, Nick Fury and Colonel Rhodes. Now, these two, to my knowledge, I cannot remember for the life of me that these two have ever had any interaction whatsoever in the actual movie. Um, they might have had an interaction, interaction uh, uh, off screen. 
but definitely on screen, they have not had an interaction. So it was a lot of back and forth of talking about race and everything else and race and power and everything else. How it's harder for men of color to, or any, any person of color to be in power. But um, it gets to the fact that basically Colonel Rhodes says, here's the thing. You're just as bad as everyone else. And you need to get your stuff together. You're going home and that's it. So Nick Fury then gets out of there, leaves without taking the um, recommended trip back home. Um, I say it that way because he definitely was not going back home. And he leaves. Where he goes is what really shocks myself and I would hope the entire audience. We find out that Nick Fury has a wife and she's a scroll. And that's how his story ends for that episode. In fact, that particular scene is how the episode ends. All right, let's talk about the scrolls. So, we find out that um, who is the head scroll, and I'm putting that in quotes, um, because he's technically not the head scroll yet, um, is going with Talos' daughter to a council meeting. And in this council meeting, um, he does not let Talos' daughter come in, um, although he does claim that if he does not come out in an hour, he, she is to kill everybody. So he goes in explaining what's going on, um, why he's doing what he's doing, and basically explaining what his plan is for the future, which is basically he wants to take over the Earth. Um, Nick Fury failed his people, and he now wants Earth as the Skrull's new planet. And not everyone was at board on first, but what we find out is, first off, the Council of Scrolls are all impersonating humans who are very high up in political power. So we then know that all of them are scrolls. But the big thing, too, is there was only one person that refused to, how do I put this, agree with the fact that the who I'm claiming to be Super Scroll is going to be um, the new general of the scrolls, and that during wartime there needs to be one person, not a democracy. And so it was agreed upon that he would be the leader. Now it was majority rules for sure, but there was not unanimous. There was somebody else who decided against it. Although she was told she would not be punished, nor would she be taken out for her um, disagreement of the new order. She leaves, and she actually calls Talos to let him know what's going on and exactly what has happened in the meeting. Then Talos and her leave. They then go back to the compound. Everyone's cheering that he's a new general. It's a phenomenal time. We find that he goes to the secret location where, he's, where it looks like they're building a machine. Now, what we find out later um, is that this machine is potentially supposed to make the scrolls more powerful. Now, that where my prediction comes in is that machine right there is going to be the cause of him becoming the Super Scroll, which is going to give him the powers of the, of the Fantastic Four. Now, we do not know 100% that he is the Super Scroll, nor do we know for a fact that, he is, um, that that machine is going to be what turns him into it. Now, granted, based on the trailer, we do see him stretch his arms, which has the potential of being Mr. Fantastic's abilities. So we are definitely thinking or leaning towards the fact that he's going to be the Super Scroll, and he's going to experiment on himself to make him the first Super Scroll. Now... Um, although we do not see this machine in action, we do see it light up, um, but it does not seem to be finished yet. We then move on to apparently the other American that was taken into custody um, was taken into custody by, I am assuming, Russians, um, put into a freezer, and a bunch of Russians were trying to beat it out of them. And then what we see is the English spy woman, is how I'm going to um, announce her, um, she comes in. And she basically tells everyone that she's in charge and she's going to take care of it and everyone needs to leave. And she asks where the emergency hatch is. And they're like, there's no such thing. And she's like, where is it? I'm not stupid. And they tell her where it is. So she then um, tells this guy, you're going to tell me everything I want to know or else I'm going to make you. And he didn't seem scared at all. She literally cuts off his finger and it's, his finger turns green. And she realizes, oh, well, I guess I know exactly who you are. And she goes, I bet you're going to talk now. So he's freaking out and everything else. He can't get out. She then injects him with 
some sort of chemical that makes him very hot. And he starts talking and what he explains and how we find out what the machine was for. We find out that there's a machine being made. Um, he does not know what the compound is, but he knows that there's a machine being made and the fact that um, it's going to be used to make the scrolls more powerful. Um, she then finds out that the scrolls have come in and started taking out everyone. She then sneaks out of the emergency hatch and gets out of there. And we're assuming Scott Free, although we do not know for a fact. They then grab him. Um, the new general asks, what did he tell everybody? And the scroll was like, I didn't tell anybody nothing. So they're driving, and for a while, they're fine. They pull over, they pull the guy out, and they shoot him in the head. Um, and that is the end of that part of the episode. So, a lot has happened. Um, there's a lot more scrolls on planet Earth than we realized. Over, I'm assuming several million. Although they only mentioned millions. Um, we also know that Nick Fury is married to a scroll, which is interesting because we didn't know Nick Fury was married. Um, and we know for a fact that there are a lot of things going on all over the place. And Colonel Rhodes is apparently very high up in America right now. And we are very interested to see where that's going to lead, especially for Armor Wars. But for right now, all we know for a fact is that the scrolls is going to lead to some sort of conflict between Nick Fury and the scrolls on some sort of conflict in the sense of getting rid of all the humans and making it a scroll free world. I mean, a, a human free world for the scrolls. Other than that, I mean, there's going to be the fact that we're going to have the super scroll be made. That's first. Um, but other than that, I don't know those specifics. We know Talos's daughter is going to change sides again. There's no way she's not. But other than that, I mean, I don't know exactly where it's going to lead. So I'm very curious. But, you know, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not? And why? Um, and as always, if you like the content you see, please like and subscribe below. Other than that, this is going to be Beastly Eel signing out. Have a great night.